Welcome to the Passionpreneur Experience, where I examine the thoughts, energy, and strategy a side hustler needs to grow their entrepreneurial dreams, all while they work their corporate nine-to-five day job. I'm your host, Bridget Cobb. Now let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Passionpreneur Experience. And this episode, I'm going to be talking about networking. I love networking. So I'm really excited to tackle this topic. And then I find this topic so interesting because as passionpreneurs, uh, many of us work in the corporate space. So, and we've been in the corporate space for a long time. And the funny thing about that is that that comes with a lot of networking often. So most of us that have been in corporate for extended period of time, we have been to networking events, plenty of them. And some of us might even consider ourselves pretty effective networkers. Uh, There's definitely an opportunity or there's definitely a possibility that you're out there saying, uh, no, Bridget, I am not comfortable with networking at all. I work in the corporate space and I hate networking. Or you're saying, I'm not in the corporate space and uh, I have, I do have a nine to five, but I have not uh, had exposure to networking. Totally fine. We're going to be talking about networking in general today, but we're also going to be talking about Uh, specifically networking for your side hustle and comparing that potentially to your current networking experience, how it might be similar, how it might be a little bit different. So first of all, let's just talk about the word networking because I know for a fact I have done live in-person workshops around networking before that um, it can be a very triggering word for people. Uh, A lot of people absolutely despise networking. They find it quite intimidating. And uh, you're going to hear things like, oh, networking, you're talking about going into a big room with a bunch of strangers, passing out business cards left and right that you're never going to look at again, or standing in the corner, watching people do that and thinking, what the heck am I doing here? I am so uncomfortable. I got to get the heck out of here as soon as possible. So if that's you in any way, shape or form, first of all, can I just say totally normal? Uh, A lot of people feel that way. And uh, more than you would think, actually. And uh, so and that's what I kind of want to dive into to start with. And that is, for as many people that I meet that are uh, really, really against uh, thinking about themselves as a networker or really approaching that space, I often find people immediately putting themselves into categories when they think about it. And the most obvious two categories that come up are the introvert versus the extrovert. Now, uh, if you're sitting there going, aha, yes, networking is available to extroverts because that's kind of their jam. That's where they see themselves. They are out there. They are talking to strangers. They are connecting. So really not my space because I am an introvert. And everybody knows that introverts do not like networking and they can't do it. It's not their style. It doesn't work for them. So I want to tackle that first because some of the most uh, interesting stuff I've done, especially in the, my in-person workshops, is have people self-identify. Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? And let's say one particular class had 50-50 split. 50% considered themselves introverts, 50% considered themselves extroverts. And we then did an exercise where I said, let's talk about our fears around uh, networking what comes up, and I was whiteboarding it. And interestingly enough, the exact same fears, worries, concerns, hates, all of that came out across both the introverts and the extroverts. So let's just take a look firstly at those two words. All right, the definitions. 
thereabouts, all right? So an introvert means that that person tends to recharge by spending time alone, all right? They lose energy from being around people for long periods of time and particularly large crowds. So when you think about yourself as an entity, as a being, we're all made of energy, all right? And we all have this energy running through us and, uh, and that energy needs to recharge and we get recharged through sleep and proper nutrition and exercise and uh, relationships, uh, but that energy can be drained um, through, <laughs> funnily enough, many of those same things. Uh, but, but we need to recharge and um, some people recharge differently than other people. Introverts recharge when they spend downtime, time by themselves. And when they're around those large groups, that energy is actively being drained. Now, it doesn't mean they can't do that, that they can't be around large groups. It just means it's draining for them. Whereas extroverts are the opposite. They gain energy from being around other people. So they find they are quite drained when they spend a lot of time alone. That's draining to them, but they like to be in and around energy so that they can kind of absorb that back up, all right? So they're seeking social aspects to recharge. Again, doesn't mean they can't spend time alone. They absolutely can, but they find it quite draining to be by themselves. So whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, it doesn't really matter because it doesn't eliminate anything from you. You can still do every single activity that the other one can do. You just need to approach it a little bit differently. Or maybe you do it for a slightly less or different length of time. Uh, maybe you approach it in a slightly different way. But it is still very much accessible to you. So let's take a look at you know what some of these big fears are. Uh, and, and some of the big fears that came out of networking uh, specifically were things like, you know, I'm shy, I can't approach, I'm, I'm, there's a fear-based um, thought there of what if somebody doesn't want to talk to me? What if I get rejected? What if I approach someone and they kind of give me a talk to the hand, go away? Um, so there's a lot of fear. And that came out, again, in that session I did across both introverts and extroverts, there was still that fear of rejection, still a fear of, of interruption. What if I interrupt somebody? Um, there's uh, confidence issues that come up across both groups. And, and that all often comes up in the form of imposter syndrome. I don't belong here. These people are more professional than I am. They have more to say than I am. Uh, what if they find out that my product isn't that great? My offering isn't that great? Uh, I don't really know how to explain what I do or who I am, uh, or they're not going to find it interesting. So imposter syndrome is a real uh, thought process that comes up in our head, and imposter uh, syndrome tells us that we don't belong where we are, and that we are just fooling people, or they're going to discover that we uh, don't belong there, that we're not smart enough, we're not... Uh, intelligent enough, we're not successful enough, whatever it is that we're afraid of, that is that little gremlin in the back of our head saying, you don't belong here, and everyone's going to figure it out. All right, so these types of fears and thoughts are coming across all people when it comes to networking. And even, you know, for someone like myself, I'm an extreme extrovert, and I love to network, but I don't walk into that room just owning the whole thing and saying, man, I, I'm going to kill it tonight. I, you know, of course, I've got the same thoughts as everybody else. Um, I've just learned to manage them uh, in a way that really works for me. So I, I'd like to do this exercise where I really drill down on one of those specific thoughts or fears that comes up for me and then kind of work it through uh, into this how does that thought affect my results at the end of the day? And so I want to give you a bit of an example of a, a thought or, or something that you might see. You might walk into a room and let's say you're actually at a physical networking event or let's just say you're, you're at a wedding 
or you are standing in line at uh, the hot dog stand at a baseball game. Whatever it is, you're standing around in a situation and there are people grouped up. All right, so you can see people in groups. And let's go back to the wedding or um, networking event. Now, you might have a thought when you see that uh, group of people, well, it would be rude if I interrupted them. So that's a thought you might have when you see a group of people speaking to each other. And when I think about that, it's rude to interrupt. What kind of feeling does that potentially generate for me? Well, if you think about it, you know, when, when were you continually told not to interrupt? Probably when you were a child. Your parents saying, don't interrupt the adults. Your teacher saying, don't interrupt during the lesson. Uh, you know, and on and on. We were told as children not to interrupt. And when I kind of get back into that headspace, it really, it, it drives this feeling of I'm childlike. I'm not very smart. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I don't have permission to speak until I'm given permission. And then, of course, what's that going to make me do? Well, it's going to stop me from approaching that group. I can tell you one thing. It might also cause me just to go sit by myself or stand by myself, go get another glass of wine, um, anything but approach somebody and talk to them. Well, the end result is I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to meet anyone that night. Not going to connect, which is the whole reason I went there. And I'm going to miss out potentially on opportunities. So I want to take a look at that same circumstance, which is people are standing around in groups and see what could happen if I changed the thought or if I approached it with a different thought. So let's try this one on. And this this might be dramatic, all right? This could be a really big jump from where you are, but let's just play around with it and see how you feel. I walk into this networking event and there are groups of people scattered around the room. My first thought is there are so many groups to pick from Which one should I approach first? That's the thought. Which group? Wow, look at all the groups in here. So much opportunity. Which one should I pick first? I can't wait to get started. That is a totally different thought. And what kind of feeling does that generate when you walk into a room and you say, this is the most amazing amount of opportunity I've seen in a long time. I can't wait to start which where which which group am I going to first? I feel a lot more confident when I'm thinking that. So now that is going to drive that feeling of confidence is going to literally make my feet walk one after another up to a group and stop there. Enter the group. So much more than it would be rude to interrupt. That is not driving my action at all. All right, so when I'm from that place of confidence, I'm going to walk up to that group, and the result is I am going to meet people. I'm going to break the threshold and get into a group and start talking. It's a really different way to approach. So part of that uh, getting ready, especially when we're talking about physical networking events where you're actually going and physically meeting people in a room, let's say, doing some thought work before you walk into the room is really important. All right, so being aware, what kind of thoughts am I having as I'm going up to this group? And with those types of thoughts, is this going to get me the end result that I want? Am I in a place of confidence? Do I feel like I have permission to be here? Do I have something to say? And do I believe that? So what I'd like you to do is really take a look at what stops you from approaching somebody, from approaching a person or joining a conversation, and kind of flesh that out. Look at that. Get curious. Uh, what am I thinking that makes me stop moving forward, that, that, that deters me from walking up to that group and saying hi? And again, this is a great activity if you want to write it out and kind of the more you write this stuff down, guys, the more thoughts just magically come in and you can really discover some cool stuff. So get curious, 
get in there and uh, and start exploring the thoughts that are creeping up in the back of your mind. Really, really important. So next, let's take a look at what you can do to prepare for a networking event. And this is where I think this extra special step we need to take as passionpreneurs, right? As uh, understanding who we are, because let's go back to just the thought of networking and put your corporate hat back on. When I go to a corporate networking event representing my corporate company, I know how to behave, all right? I've been doing it for a long time. I know how to talk about my job role, and I understand why I'm there. Uh, Now, in most cases, for me, I'm there either because I'm looking for a job, so I'm looking for a potential employer within that room. Um, I'm looking for new employees, so I'm there because I'm helping my company recruit, So I'm looking for people that could join my team or join the company. Um, Nine times out of 10 for me, I was never there to sell, but you might be there to sell your your company's product. Um, There are a lot of other reasons. We we always have a purpose for going. And I think this is where we start to differentiate because we may be very used to going to networking events with our corporate hat on and going for the reasons that we go for our corporate job. And I want to challenge you to take a moment to step back and say, wait, okay, maybe I need to change my mindset there uh, if I want to start going to networking events for my own business, for my passionpreneur experience, for my uh, entrepreneurial efforts. And being very clear that when you go to a networking event, which one are you representing? This is something that I have to say I instituted in January of this year, and I have not looked back, and I've been loving it. I made a profession, if you will. <laughs> I uh, announced publicly at a networking event, actually, it worked out really well, that I would no longer be representing my corporate company when I went to networking events, that from that day forward, I would only represent my own personal business. So you know the the drill with a, a lot of networking events, you've got your name tag and your company name, maybe even your title on there. And I stopped submitting my corporate company and uh, and title and now will only represent my personal business. And for me, that was a decision that I made because I wanted to practice talking about my business more. I have had so much practice talking about myself as a corporate identity, as a corporate employee. I've had so much practice talking about my company uh, and every company I've ever worked for and the products that we sold or the services that we provided When do I get the practice and the opportunity to talk about my business and really represent it? Well, since I enjoy networking events and I attend them quite frequently, this was my opportunity to say, I draw the line. I now practice talking about myself. (laughs) I only talk about my business. I only talk about what I offer. And let me tell you what, it was harder than I thought. I am an avid networker. And I felt myself walking into a room and my confidence was shaken. I immediately wanted to default back to talking about my corporate job and experience because I was so comfortable there. So this is a challenge I would definitely put out to you guys to try. And um, if you if you do love to network and you're used to going out there and representing your corporate self, try it on and say, I will not mention my corporate identity title company in this event ever, no matter what. I only represent myself and see what happens. See what comes up for you because this has been a great um, thought exercise for me when if, if I don't see someone and often, you know, I've worked for a couple companies where when I said the company name, people engaged. Oh, how interesting. Oh, tell me more about that. Uh, because the company had a reputation. 
All right, so the company name preceded me. Very easy to ride the coattails of that. And and now I've got somebody's active interest and engagement. Oh, that feels good. I love that. But what happens when I say, well, oh, hi, I'm Bridget, and, and uh, I own Bridget Cobb Coaching, uh, which is a business that uh, coaches uh, passionpreneurs, people that uh, have a side hustle while they work their corporate nine to five. And you know, uh, there have been times where you you see the kind of gloss over happen in their eyes, and I'm not getting the same spark and excitement that I might have gotten out of mentioning my corporate job. Well, uh, I needed to get over that. <laughs> All right, I needed to experience that a few times, uh, a few lots of times, uh, because. That's part of it. That's part of learning how to crisp up how I talk about myself and my company and what I do. So highly, highly suggest that you take that practice going forward and go out there, try it on, see how it feels. Um, If something comes up for you, if you feel that you are um, struggling to say who you are and what you do, then great, you've discovered something very powerful. That's work that you can bring back and drill down on uh, and, and, and define and clean up. And then you go back and you practice it again. All right, so the first part of this podcast, really just talking about networking, what it is, in case you're not a comfortable networker or you're not an active networker, maybe that's not a big piece of what you did and uh, what you do in your nine to five. But um it is an important part of growing your side hustle business. Going back to why we network as a corporate entity or employee versus why we network as an entrepreneur, I also want to put out the, some differences there. All right. And again, we might be going out there and networking as an entrepreneur for clients. We want to go and we want to meet new clients. But we might be going out also, to collaborate. Potentially, we want to meet other entrepreneurs or other businesses that we could collaborate with and work with in the future. We might want to go out there just to build community, get out there, meet other entrepreneurs, and uh, start making friendships, making connections that we can partner with and learn from uh, and uh, met, get uh, receive mentorship from. So, You're not always out there hustling for clients, looking for clients, looking for money coming in. Uh, Sometimes you're out there purely to give, uh, to see who you can um, affect, you know, if you can bring some knowledge out there or share your talent, share your gift, whatever it is you're building, uh, and then uh, build connection, build community, get some support structure out there. Uh, The best part of all is that when you're out there networking specifically for your business, for your side hustle, you are crafting your message, your mission, what it is you do, what it is you're bringing forward. All right. So if you're not out there with that specific mission right now to tell your story, your business's story, and, and talk about the effect that you can bring to the world, give yourself that challenge. All right. And see how you might be able to schedule some type of networking opportunity. And that can look like a, an organized networking event. You could find them on Eventbrite. You can find them on Facebook. They're literally everywhere. Uh, maybe it's joining some type of social group um, or a club or a society. There's lots of professional societies out there. Um, there are you know, uh, maybe coffee groups, walking groups. Uh, There's lots of opportunity to get out there and just socially meet people through meetups, those types of things. Uh, Maybe it's even online in an online forum. So you're not physically face-to-face with somebody. You are in an online community. And I know I've mentioned it before. You've got the Passionpreneur Experience. It's a beautiful place to practice. So head on over to Facebook. You can look up Bridget Cobb Coaching. And uh, you'll see a big blue button there on the page to join the Passionpreneur Experience. That is an online community for other passionpreneurs like you, people that are working their nine to five and growing their side hustle business at the same time. 
All right, so jump on in there. Start learning about what other people do. What are their struggles? Share your struggles. See if they've got some fantastic, solid advice that can push you forward. So networking, super powerful uh, to kind of wrap up there, guys. Make sure you, one, are doing it. Two, understand why you're doing it and know why you're going out there and and, uh, creating that connection. And uh, three, getting right and comfortable with your message, who you are as an entrepreneur, how you identify yourself. And if you haven't already, go back and listen to episode two. That is about really getting comfortable with your identity as an entrepreneur, as well as uh, a nine to five job, day job person, right? So kind of distinguishing between those two or seeing how they merge together and getting really comfortable with who that is for you and how you show up. All right, so listen to episode two first, if you haven't already, and then this one kind of ties in together because once you get that solid identity down, it's going to make your message going out uh, as uh, an entrepreneur in a networking sense much more clear. So let's think about what you're actually going to be talking about in a networking setting. And uh, I kind of drill it down like this. So it's, if you haven't already, go back and listen to episode two, which is about identity and how you view yourself as a side hustler, what that means to you. Because once you start getting comfortable with that, you can really start to develop a purpose statement for yourself. Uh, And a purpose statement can look something like this. Um, I help who? I help and I whoever that is, a person, a group, um, a, a certain entity with what specifically? I help who with what specifically? So I help passionpreneurs build their business alongside their full-time nine to five. That's me. That's my statement. That's what I do. So you could also build it around, you know, who you are, where you are, and what you have to offer. Those three pieces, if you can fit that nicely into one statement to say who you are, where you are, and what you have to offer, then uh, you start to paint a really nice, concise little picture about what you do and what that might mean to the other person. Right? And so when you're going to a uh, networking event, that's what you're leading with. That's how you're introducing yourself and really focusing on that entrepreneurial side and that gift that you're bringing to the world. The other thing that you can do to prepare for a networking event, and often people say, well, I wouldn't know what to say once I get there. You've got your purpose statement for one. The second thing you can prepare in advance is what I call your three things list. And your three things list is going to allow you to really understand why am I at this networking event to begin with? And what is it that I want to walk away with? So you prepare three things list. The first one is three things that you can give. All right. And the three things that you could give could be a whole range. It could be I can give um, a coaching, free coaching session. I can give uh, time for mentorship. I can give, um, maybe you've got a free a freebie with your business, free workbook, a free video, uh, some type of free training. Uh, those are all things that you can give, all right? And you kind of get that, in you, that list mentally in your mind. These are three things that I could give to somebody else. You also need to clarify your get list. What are three things that I need? So you might recognize that moment. I am looking for a mentor. I need a. Uh, I need advice on a good virtual assistant. So I'm looking for recommendations on virtual assistants. Uh, maybe I need a specific product or service for my business. I need a logo designer. I need uh, someone to help me with my website. All right, so get that together. What are you looking for and what do you need for your business? When you go into a networking event and you're prepared with your mission, or sorry, your purpose statement and your three things lists, what are three things that I need and what are three things I can give? Suddenly, when you do walk up to that group 
which you have permission to speak to, and you introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Bridget with my purpose statement. And then the conversation naturally starts to occur. People are talking. If somebody happens to say, oh, I run a virtual assistant business, or I, um, man, I'm really looking for a, a, a short little module that will walk me through how to do X, and you provide that, that's your moment. That's your moment to jump in. You've already thought about this stuff in advance, and you can start to jump in and really provide value say, oh, I've got a great recommendation for that. I actually have a resource for that. Let's talk a little bit uh, more about it because I'm really passionate about that area. All right, so that's going to bring opportunity for you to be providing value, gaining value from the conversation as well, if it happens to be something that you need, and, uh, and creating connection. The reason I tell you to do this in advance is that sometimes, yes, networking can be a little overwhelming. So if you find yourself in that state preparing beforehand, kind of help take the edge off so that as soon as you see a group of people that you're interested in connecting with, you can run through your three things lists in your mind. What are three things that I need? What are three things I can give? And what is my purpose statement? Let me just run through that mentally really quick, and then I'm going to walk up to that group and say, excuse me, mind if I join you? Or excuse me, can I join this group? And you're in. So that is all the time I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Next week, we will be talking about the energy vortex. And that is, uh, I don't know how many times I speak to other passionpreneurs, and they say, I just don't have any energy left for my business. I hear you. I know that everybody else hears you because we're all feeling it. So I'm going to be tackling that next week. Look forward to seeing you then. And as always, thank you for joining me here on the Passionpreneur Experience. Are you building your side hustle business all on your own? Well, you don't have to. Engaging with and being accountable to a supportive community will increase your productivity and keep you on track. Join my private Facebook community, The Passionpreneur Experience, and connect with like-minded side hustlers just like you. Head to the show notes now for a link to the group and start building the business of your dreams.